Welcome to the StockMinute.com studios. I'm your StockMinute, Brian Johnson, and the markets did move up today on fill-in-the-blank news. A lot of them were uh, attributing it to the uh, earnings, places like Walmart. I'm always curious when they talk about Walmart earnings because uh, if and when we are in a recession, you can go back and take a look. Walmart's a good recession stock. <laughs> Um, obviously, when things get bad and nobody has money, they stop going to places like J.C. Penney and, and J. Crew, Abercrombie, and they start going to places like Walmart. It's cheaper that way. So if you want a good recession-type stock, I won't say recession-proof, but I will say a good uh, fight against the you know recessions and stuff. Walmart's a good place to look at. McDonald's tends to do very well too. Everybody stops going to Applebee's and they start going to McDonald's instead. Uh, and then the same thing's true of Walmart. They're not buying J. Crew so much anymore as you are buying Walmart just to get by for the time being <laughs> until you have more money. So when I see that the markets jumped up on Walmart earnings, I'm like, well, I don't know if that's necessarily so good <laughs> for the economy as a whole. You have to start asking questions. What else is suffering if Walmart's up? So, as it is, the markets did move up today. Coming off of this little bounce that we saw back here. Now, you know, we can wave count this all we want, but if you want a gut feeling, I'm not so sure this wasn't maybe the end of a wave three before now, a wave four. Now maybe we start down for a wave five. Who knows where we're going with this? Only time will tell us. The important thing is this. Gave you levels yesterday and, and the levels that we had been talking about for quite a while, and it, one of them was above the 10-400 area. Worked beautifully today. If you were looking for a day trade, this was the place to get in. You may have only played it back for 50 points, which is fine. This was a great place to look for a, a profit target here and or maybe have a stop moved up below this. By the end of the day, we came all the way back. Don't know if you would have held all day long, but should have taken profits somewhere up or around this uh, 10 450 area, giving you a little bit of profits on the day. That isn't killer profits by any means, but it's still a good trade turned into good profits. This trade actually played out much better on the SPX for those of you that were playing the SP um, levels I had been giving you. So let's go ahead and look at the daily, and you can see here where we have the move back up, and this is that overhead I talked about. I said, man, oh man, would much rather. You know, more conservative traders need to wait till we get above 10, 500. That never happened today, and you can see why. Just so much overhead resistance. The 200, this uh, previous line, and then the 20. Just a lot of overhead uh, resistance above us. And eventually, we did get it to hold right at the 20 before moving right back down again. So good trade for those of you that happen to be watching that. We're still now kind of stuck in... Once again, here we go with a trading range, and that will put us between the 50 and the 20. Those are still my areas to be watching. Short below 10, 200, and kind of long above 10, 500. But you can see that after today's move, um, we're still just kind of in a stalemate was a good day up 100 points that's good for the Dow but we really haven't gotten anywhere and we really haven't broken anything from the bear side as of yet so we'll watch tomorrow to see if there's any additional volatility that comes pouring into the markets and see if we can get back above this 10 500 if you are not long or are looking for another entry tomorrow that would be your spot to get long right there at the 10 500 area and or below 10 200 for the more aggressive 10 100 for the more conservative NASDAQ on a 60 was up into all of these moving averages before pulling back. So we saw these overhead areas hold very well. 1860 was one of my areas here. 1860.68 was the high. A lot of these holding very, very nicely today while still giving us opportunities to trade. Above 1840 back to 1860 or so was a great trade. Great opportunity to make a little bit of money on the NASDAQ. Taking a look at from a daily, you can see where we toppled last week and now we're seeing a little bit of a bounce. Of course, it was met by selling when we got up here to this 1860-ish area. But it is still in what seems to be a mild pullback at this time. I still have to look at this as nothing's broken now from the bear side. We're below that blue line. We're just coming back to kind of fill in a few of these gaps. We may even make it back up here above this area if we get one more good push tomorrow to kind of fill this gap back here. But otherwise, I am not convinced that this bear move is quite over yet. 
from a weekly chart too you can see us stuck here just kind of in the middle of everything it's only tuesday we won't panic quite yet about weekly charts okay this was the great trade here spx loved it above 1090 liked it back to the 1100 area look what we got nice little push above 1090 you could have got more aggressive down here but for a very good safe conservative trade it was above 1090 taking you right back to 1100 1100.14 actually was the high so this trade worked out beautifully today really like the action i saw here overall does kind of look like a one two three type of a move so i can make cases both bearish and bullish over the short term meaning over the next day or two i can see us going up I can completely see us going down. I, it, there's, I'm really neutral right now over the next day or two in the trading. So what do I do? I, you just plant your levels and you go from there. I, I still like this back below maybe 1080 to the short side and above 1100 to the long side. There's still some overhead resistance we've got to work on even if we get above 1100. It's not necessarily clear sailing, but like what I'm seeing here, in the shorter term on a push above 1100 if we can get back up and over that again so very neutral in here especially for the next day or two i've got no bias either way i'm just gonna let the charts tell me which way to take the trade as they did today on the move over 1090 that ended up being a very nice trade the daily coming right here you can see us get back above the 50 touch that 1100 and retreat very nice there. Any push above 1100, you've got to worry about this 20 day moving average, which is going to be at 1105. Gee, 1105 has popped up quite a bit in our trading over the last month or two, and it's going to pop up again if we happen to break 1100 tomorrow. Keep these in mind. I still like overhead resistance areas of 1100, 1105, and 1115. Keep all of those in mind if we break to the upside. Back below 1085 for the more aggressive shorters, otherwise below 1080 I think gives you another good entry to the short side. From a weekly only Tuesday, let's not worry about it quite yet. VIX was down today, confirming the move up, so we are seeing that the move today was confirmed by the VIX, including the little move down at the end of the day in the markets and a move up at the end of the day in the VIX. It's all working beautifully as of right now. So we'll see if that fear continues to bleed out and or move up over the next couple days. You can see the nice week that the VIX had last uh, last week with fear coming back into the markets only to come pouring back out of it again this week. So far, it's only Tuesday, granted, but look at what we see. It's the same thing, just lots of chop all the way down here. Just keep, uh, just keep watching for the VIX to confirm what we're seeing in the markets. It's very important. Apple was ultimately up four dollars today just a great move on apple most of it with this little gap up where that's right up and above this 250 area boy once we got above about 250 50 it was on its way where did it stop very logical overhead resistance got held up right here at the 50 period moving average just really good opportunities once again to trade apple even if you only caught a buck or two bucks of this trade still a wonderful wonderful trade worked out very well now we're pulling back again to where we do not know we, uh, we'll just have to wait and see what tomorrow brings us I really like levels now kind of above 254 ish or so back to about 256 and then below 250 I still like 250 to hold as support but anything back below about 249.50 probably takes us back into the 248 ish range from a daily you can <laughs> it's much prettier on a 60 minute is it not Apple on a daily still very, very choppy, very sideways. So if you're looking to swing trade this or if you're a long-term investor, you've got to be just whatever at this point, right? There's nothing happening here. Your break even if you invested back in, uh, you know, uh, April time frame, you're just, you're, it's going nowhere. Still waiting for more major breaks to give you longer-term investors something to crow about, but right now you got nothing. It's just sideways. Much easier to track this on a 60 minute for the time being. This is what it's pushing for to get back and up up and over that 20 week moving average. And that is currently at 254.75. The high today, uh, 254.63. Gee, you don't suppose that might be overhead resistance now, do you? Keep that in your charts as we push forward. FAS on a 60 minute. Saw a little gap up, move back down. Oper not really, a little bit of opportunity today to take this trade 
for a few pennies, but man, the way this thing is moving, it's doing the same type of thing uh, as what we're seeing on Apple. The only difference is Apple's moving like two, three, four dollars, which gives you definitely opportunity, whereas FAS is moving, you know, 20, 30, 40 cents. Ugh, so much more difficult to play those type of moves. Faz on a 60 minute here, back up and above that 50, uh, $15. But you can see as we fell below $15, look what happened. We got some selling action in coming right back to the 50. It's a good trade. Good trade. Could have made a good 20, 30 cents off that trade. Now we're back up and above 15 bucks. So we'll be very cautious moving into tomorrow. As long as it holds this 50 day moving average, you got to give the credit to the bulls until such time as that is broken. Now, back up above 1550. Yeah, sure, maybe another opportunity to try for that $16 mark. Keep that in mind as we push into tomorrow. And then to the short side, I'm not requesting anything there. You just don't know. That'll do it for today's video, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, keep these levels in mind as we push into tomorrow. If you've been following along, you made a little bit of money today. Hopefully we can keep that pattern going the rest of the week. Bye.